It's kind of funny because uh, I'm going to be talking about cooking as well. And that may, may, that may sound weird, but it's going to make sense in the end. So I don't know about you guys, but I love cooking and I love baking. And last year I was learning some techniques of, you know, like learning how to cook and how to, to bake. And then there's a, a phrase in cooking called the mise en place. Uh, pardon my French, I don't know if I said it correctly. But mise en place pretty much means putting things in place. So when you, before you start cooking, you just organize your ingredients in a way that it's easier for you to reach them when you're cooking. Let's say you cook, you're making a salad. It's very funny that I'm talking about salad at Seagraph, but anyway, you're making a salad and then, or maybe you're cooking some vegetables and then you need some onions. So instead of cutting the onions while you, you're cooking, you just have it there cut already, right? So, uh, so that's why orga organization is key and also help, help us with fast turnarounds. And in our demo, I'm going to show how I use this approach in texturing. Because that's pretty much, I pretty much organize my scene in Mari in a way where before I start any painting, I just put everything uh, around me. I have everything set up, all my baked maps and all, everything. So when I need them, I can just grab it and start cooking. Okay? So, uh, okay. So now I'm going to jump into Mari and I'm going to showcase the mise en place method and other things that are pretty cool. Uh, so usually when I start a project in Mari, I'm just going to show you some cool features. For example, uh, let me just put this aside for a second. And I'm just going to go to my diffuse map. And then here, you can add versions to your project. And then in my case, I added a version with a full body. But let's say you changed your, your UVs or you just want to work in a part of your project, you can just add a section like I did. And then in the UV view here, you can see what's going on. So you don't have to bring a whole new object. You can bring an object if you want. But in this case, sometimes I just like to add you know, different versions and all that. Um, and here, as you can see, this project is considered a hero asset. Hero asset is like when you have an asset that gets super close to the camera and is really important in production. So I, as you can see, I have a ton of UVs, uh, UV tiles. I have a bunch. And, and Mari can handle like a crazy amount of UDIMs, and this is really nice. Um, so I'm just going to grab some references that I use for this project as well. So I don't know if you guys watched Pacific Rim. So this is one of the suits. And this was like my main reference and my main inspiration for this robot. So I was trying to achieve that same kind of like chipped paint look and, and especially like the color and all that. So it was a pretty cool uh, reference and I was working on it. Um, yeah. So before I start, I just you know, like to import versions and make sure that everything is fine with my UVs, and then I look at, them at, my, at my references. And then, so what is, again, what is the mise en place method? Uh, when I have my object imported into Mari, I pretty much create a new channel, and I like to call resources. So my resources, uh, as you can see, is this channel over here, and then I can, pretty much, I can import baked maps. So I usually bake my maps in other softwares as well. I use Substance Painter to bake maps. I use ZBrush to bake maps. There's many other softwares that you can use. And I use Modo and Mari. So I bake all these maps and I can simply import them into Mari. And another really important thing in the mise en place method, rename your stuff. Always. Like, always. Especially in production because if someone takes your file, they're going to love you. A lot. Yeah, people love you uh, if you put names in, name in things. So I just start importing different types of AO maps. Let me just change it to paint target. Yeah, as you can see, I have a variation of maps. And again, if we think about cooking, it's like different ingredients, right? Like we have white pepper and black pepper and I don't know, different um, ingredients for, for cooking. So that's the first thing I like to do. I import all the maps that I, I'm going to need. 
sometimes I like to have a lot of variation, especially in my curvature maps. So I have maps that are very sharp, others that are a bit more soft. And I also, before I start painting anything, I like to create my isolation masks. Some people know them as material IDs as, as well. Uh, and it, this will depend on the look dev artist that you're working with. Sometimes the look dev artist, he, he prefers an RGB mask. That's up to you and, and you know, the communication with your look dev department. Um, I, I usually like to create a black and white mask. And I like to call them ISO and then the name of the material. So here I have my mask ISO white metal, mask ISO rubber, and all that. So after I establish all these isolation masks, and I have all my baked maps in my channel, now is the time to start you know, assembling uh, the other channels, the, mo you know, the most important channels. So I'm just going to jump into my diffuse now. And I'm going to take a look at how I bring these things to life. As you can see here in my diffuse, I have all my materials separated into different folders. And again, name, naming your, your layers is very important so you don't get lost. And then the first thing I like to do, I like to bring my isolation mask into a mask stack. So anything inside that folder, it's going to be my white metal. So if I just press Shift and click here, everything gets the white metal detail. If I press it again, it isolates that area, right? So I'm going to turn off my damage. OK. And yeah. And so now that I, got, that I brought this isolation mask, I can start developing my, my diffuse map, for example. And yeah, so here I have my base call, my base color. I'm just going to turn off this other layers for now. And what I like to do in Mari when I'm developing my diffuse map, I like to keep it very, like, keep it very simple, right? I don't, I, don't, I don't complicate things. So I just create like a, a, a base color for my color, of course. And then I start adding some breakups just with a tileable here. I had some nice color breakup. And then there's another really powerful tool, which is the adjustment layers. And then not, o not only that, but you can add mask stacks into your adjustment layers. And, and this way, you can create like a crazy amount of details. You can add you know, as many layers you want inside the stack. And what I like to do here now in this stack, I can start sharing the layers from my resources channel. You can press Ctrl, Shift, and drag. You can just, let's say, I want to drag this image occlusion here. You can just drag into your into a mask stack. And here, you, this, this layer is going to be shared into your resources. So any, anything you want to modify into your layer there, it's going to affect the other channels. Um, and the beauty of that is that, let's say, in production, you baked your image occlusion map. It took forever. And then you shared it everywhere. You have it in, shared in, I don't know, five channels. And then it looks beautiful. And then the director comes and say, listen, it doesn't look good. So we have to change your UVs. And then you're like, oh, OK. Um, you just have to, I just have to redo everything. But the beauty of it is that there's another feature in Mari that not a lot of, not a lot of people know about it. And it's been around for a while. It's called import into current layer. So the beauty of it is that you can import a new ambient occlusion map with a new model with different UVs, and then it's going to update everywhere. Whenever you have a shared layer, it's going to update immediately. And that's beautiful, and it's super powerful. Because again, we, we are thinking ahead. The time that we spent uh, with mise en place and organizing everything is just going to save you a lot of time in the end. So, that's why I think uh, being organized from the beginning is extremely helpful. And again, not only in Mari, also if you think about other softwares, it's the same idea, being organized and making sure that uh, if you pass it to someone else, they know what they're looking at, OK? So yeah, so in my HSV node, I just like to develop 
And I, again, I create a folder. Again, folders are really important in Mari, and some people don't, don't, don't use it, but the beauty of folders is that you can share this folder into other channels. Let's say if you have a bump channel, gloss channel, you can share this folder, and then you're going to have the same details. And if you want to, uh, let's say if you want to add extra details to that uh, information, you can create a new folder. And now in Mari 4, you can actually just click here, and then it parents the folder. And then you can make adjustments on top of that folder, which are not going to be shared. So if you work in your gloss, you want some extra, some different details, you can adjust it here on top, right? Um, yeah, so folders are really powerful, and I love using them. And then here, I just added another, oh, wait, sorry. Uh, oh, I should, I can look here. Yeah, I forgot about that. Um, so I just added a new, another HSV layer. And then you can put a color that you want. Here, in this other HSV node, I'm using my thickness map with the same idea. OK? And so it's all about simplicity and, and how you organize things. So after I'm done developing my base colors in Mari, um, as you can see here, I have all these other maps that I developed in the same way. Right? And then, and then in the end, you have the damage. I have my damage where, if I just turn on, and it was the same idea. For, for my damage details, I usually like to create a new channel. As you can see here, I have it called Mask Wear. And the beauty of creating a new channel and developing your mask into a new channel is that it's not... Because when you're developing your, your channels, and if you have a lot of UDIMs, uh, you can get a bit slow. So if you create a new channel, it's going to reset, and then you can you know, have more freedom to paint and do whatever you want. So I like to create new channels and develop as much as I, as I want. And then when I'm done with that detail, as you can see here, close this for now. I can I can grab the, the folder with my wear metal and just drag into my other channels. And I do the same thing for my dust. And you can control the opacity and the blending mode as much as you can. Yeah, look at that. And then by separating everything into channels and masks, you give look development more a freedom to do whatever they want with that information, right? So you develop in your diffuse as much as you, as you want, and then you give it to uh, the look dev department, and then they can do what they please, OK? Um, that's another really cool thing that I like to do sometimes is, um, oh, sorry, I'm, I want to talk about paint buffer and how powerful it can be as well. Here, I want to go back to my mask wear, and then let's say you want to project more of this type of detail here. You could just access your image manager. I have some stencils here that I downloaded, or some of them are I created. And then the beauty of the, the paint buffer is that you can, if you set it to manual, you can pretty much project. Imagine you have glass, and then you can project on it. And then you can just move around and then project it again, if, if you please. Um, let me find here, manual. 
Yeah, so if you set it to manual, you can pretty much do this, right? If you set it to luminance, do whatever you want, blah, blah, blah. And then you can move around. Actually, you can bake it first. Let me just project. Um, clear my painting, project. And then you can bake it, move it around. And then you can even warp it if you want to do something more fancy. And Mari is really powerful when it comes to projections, right? Like if you're working on digi doubles and projecting faces and all that, it's extremely powerful. So the warping tool is great. There's also the toe brush and all that. So I like to take advantage of these tools as much as I can. And especially like uh, going back to the whole uh, procedural thing, right? Like I, I think that nowadays my, my, my texture workflow is, I would say is 90% procedural. I pretty much use tileables uh, and other maps and, and baked maps uh, for 90%, 90%, 95% of my workflow. And then in the end, I like to add an extra extra love to my, to my textures. And, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's funny because people say, when they say procedural, they think it's a bad thing. I remember once I was telling uh, someone, it's like, hey, uh, this was pretty much procedural. It's like, oh, but it looks procedural. And then I showed him again later without changing anything, keeping it procedural. And they're like, oh, it looks way better now. I was like, because I didn't tell you it was procedural. So people have this thing against procedural uh, painting. And I under understand when you just throw a preset or do whatever. And, and no, you have, to you have to develop your eyes so it doesn't look bad. That's pretty much it, right? Like you have to make sure that it looks good. And that's another reason why having references, it's always, always very important. You know, like why you should always have your textures right next to you and make sure that the patterns uh, they make sense in real life. That's something that I was always trying to keep in mind for, for this project. Uh, as you can see here, I was always trying to make sure that Leviathan uh, could be seen in, real, in the real, real world. Real world. Oh my God, this is horrible for Brazilians. Um, yeah, so I always try to uh, think about materials and how the wear damage looked like and again, having the references right next to you all the time is very, very important, okay? Um, so other than that, I think I just want to talk a bit about uh, shaders. Yeah. That's the last step. Oh, there's also something really cool. Uh, see, some people don't know this trick, but you can pause your viewport in Mari, and there's, the shortcut is not set, but you have to do it yourself. So if you go here to your shortcut, shortcuts, you can search for uh, viewport, and then, where is it? Uh, toggle viewport, no, sorry, uh, shader comp, toggle shader compiling, and then I like to set it to space, uh, yes, and then what I so every time you do something here, it starts calculating the shader, right? If you move it, if you change from a channel to another, you see that if you have a heavy scene, uh, it can be a problem. So what I like to do, I like to pause it, pressing space, and then I can do whatever I want. I can do like uh, any development I want is going to be much faster, right? So here in my shader, I'm just gonna. Set up something quickly. Um, loss. I'm gonna turn this off. And then I'm gonna go to my shader. And now you can you can pretty much use V-Ray shaders, Arnold shaders, and many others just to visualize it here and make sure that you have the values uh, correctly. I'm going to set up my bump and my reflection glossiness because I want to make sure that I have the proper values for gloss and bump before I send it to LookDev. 
And you can adjust everything here. And again, this is, uh, I like to do that a lot in production, just so I, I have more control of things. Then I have to set this color. And then you have an idea of like how the values and how the breakups are going to work uh, when you send it to V-Ray. Okay, so when you, when you send, send it to, you, to render, you know that the value that you see, the breakups there, they're going to be matching to whatever you have in Mari. Uh, I mean, some look dev artists, they prefer to have full range. They say, oh, maybe give me all the values that you can. That's cool. But if you know the values, if you know, like, oh, how glossy this, is gonna, this material is going to be, this is really important. Okay? Um, yeah, so... Yeah, I just want to say thank you guys for you know being here today. Uh, if thank you, um, and if you have any questions, I'm gonna be hanging out here for you know 15 minutes, and you can just come and talk and chat and anything. You can add me on Facebook, whatever, anything. And uh, yeah, so thank you again, and yeah, thank you. Cheers.